All right, gang, here we go. So this is Chem 2, Unit 5. We're going to be talking about Lewis structures, how to write them, uh, resonance structures, and formal charges. Should be lots of fun. All right, so Lewis structures. So let's talk about how to write Lewis structures. So we're just going to kind of uh, blow through some of these steps that they outline here and then do a couple example problems, and then we'll move on to some more exciting stuff. Okay, first step whenever you're trying to write a Lewis structure is just write it about or sum up all the valence electrons that are involved. Okay, so here you've got PCl3, phosphorus. So the way I like to write it, they've written it out like this, but the way I write, like to write it is I like to write out, well, I've got a phosphorus and three chlorines. All right, and then I'm going to add those guys up. Phosphorus has five valence electrons. Chlorine has seven, so it'd be three times seven. And you say uh, three times seven is 21 plus 5 is 26 so you get those 26 valence electrons uh, a couple things to keep in mind if it's an anion remember an anion it has a negative charge so you see and that can only occur by having extra electrons so if it's negative you're just going to add an electron for each negative charge that you have if it's a cation then you're going to subtract one electron all right pretty simple after you do that, you're going to write the the general structure, the least electronegative element, least electro, we're just gonna say e neg element goes in middle. Okay. In the middle. So the least electronegative element goes to the middle. You're going to attach everything with single bonds. And the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to, and they've got kind of done a weird thing here. Let's So let's just finish this up right where they've had it here. Okay, and you're going to sit here and you're going to give everything a full octet. So you're just going to add dots all the way around to everything so they all have a full octet. All right, okay. So you got two, four, six, eight, ten, and then you're gonna count how many total electrons you have. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six. So we've used twenty-six electrons. And remember from over here we had twenty-six electrons to use total. So this would have to be that is the Lewis structure of P for PCL3. Okay. Now the way they do it is they add uh, octets to only the outermost electrons and then they count up how many they have and how many they have left over and anything left over they put on the central atom. Okay. And so it's essentially six of one half dozen the other, um, one way or the other. Okay. So let's, let's do another one real quick where we didn't have enough electrons. So let's talk about HCN. So HCN, uh, we've got a hydrogen, we've got a carbon, we've got a nitrogen. Okay, and we're going to add these guys up together. So we got hydrogen has one, carbon has four, nitrogen has five. So that's 10 valence electrons. All right. Uh, carbon is the least electronegative, so it's going to go in the middle. So we'll say H attached to carbon, attached to nitrogen. Now we're going to give everything a full octet, right? So hydrogen, its full octet is helium, so, you know, uh, valence. So that means two. So we're not going to add any more electrons to hydrogen. So we're just going to add until carbon gets a full octet. And then we're going to do the same thing for nitrogen. So we're going to add electrons until nitrogen has a full octet. All right. So now we're going to count, out, count up how many electrons in total we've used. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So we've used four too many electrons. So that means that we're going to have to have a two double bonds or a triple bond. Well, we know that hydrogen can never have more than a single bond. So it can't be hydrogen. So that means we have to go with the, the triple bond between those guys over here. So we're going to erase these guys here like so. Okay, and give this a triple bond. Uh, to carbon. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And we've used 10. We had 10. We're good. We're Gucci right there. All right. So that's how you figure out if you need multiple bonds. Now, the thing about it is life gets more exciting because um, the there's a lot of times more than one way you can write a Lewis structure. Okay. So for example, CO2. So if you look at CO2 real quick, so let's just rewrite these up here so we can kind of doodle on them without making a giant mess. So if you have this structure, okay, for um, carbon dioxide, three, four, five, six, versus uh, this guy here, double bonded to the oxygen, we get two, two, Double bonded to oxygen two two. So if we're looking at these two different structures of carbon dioxide, really um, in chem one you usually you had really two rules to go on, right? Uh, rule number one is don't use 
use uh, too many or too few electrons, right? That was rule number one. And then second rule was octet for everything, right? Those were your two big rules that you ran with, okay? So based on these two rules we had for chem one, both of these structures are equally good, okay? Uh, carbon dioxide, you know, you get uh, uh, 12, 16 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And so we've got the same number of electrons in both, and in both cases, both all the elements have a full octet. So according to our rules in Chem 1, uh, both, of these or both of these formal structures or electron structures are equally valid. However, it doesn't quite work like that. So in order to determine which is the more dominant structure, we have to use these new things called formal charges. Now formal charges are kind of like oxidation numbers in the fact that it's purely a uh, notation system or a, a way to help us keep track of um, what might be happening in our, in our uh, mole molecule. All right. So the formal charge is simply a, a bookkeeping way. All right. So it's a way of keeping track of um, and helping us determine what structure is most dominant. All right. So here's how I go about it. They give you this formula, which is all fine and dandy, but I do it a little bit easier instead of worrying about this half bonding electrons and all non bonding electron stuff. Then and this will work just fine. But what I do is I'll take it and do exactly what they did here. Okay, and you, you draw a box around the elements you're looking at. So you take, you know, you draw your box around oxygen here. And all you have to do is you take the number of valence electrons and subtract the electrons assigned to the atom. Okay, so oxygen comes in with six valence electrons. So you write a six, and then you're going to subtract out the number of electrons that are assigned to that atom. And that's simply the electrons that are in your box. Those are the ones that are assigned to it. So you go one, two, three, four. So there's your four from your lone pairs. And then any time any bond you cut in half, notice that when we cut that bond in half, half of the electrons went here on this side here, and then half of them went over here. Okay. So from this bond, so inside my box, I have six electrons. So my formal charge on this oxygen is zero, all right? And then we can do the same thing with this carbon. We just use the same box that we have drawn here, okay? And so we get, uh, you know, half of each of these bonds, and then no lone pairs on the carbon, so it'd be four minus four, so the zero. Same thing with this oxygen over here. All right, so in this structure, all three elements have a formal charge of zero. All right. Um, in this one, we can kind of see the same thing going on. You look at your bonds. Notice this is a single bond, so it only represents one electron. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for this. Six valence, so six minus seven. You get a negative one formal charge. Four minus four is zero, and six minus five is positive one. Okay. Um, so here's our formal charges for oxygen, carbon, and oxygen, and this guy here. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to with formal charge that kind of kind of give you some help here is that your uh, total, if you sum all the formal charges for your molecule, they should equal the charge on whatever thing you're looking at. Okay. All right. So carbon dioxide is neutral, right? It doesn't have a positive or negative or anything like that. So the total formal charge, all the formal charges should equal the total charge on carbon dioxide, which is zero. So all the formal charges should add up to zero. And that's one way to double check that you've done formal charges correctly. All right. Notice that uh, your oxygens add up to zero. You know, your zero plus zero plus zero, that equals zero. And then on the next one, you got negative one, zero, and one, that also adds up to zero. So that's a good way to keep track of what's going on with all that stuff. Now, why are formal charges important? Well, they allow us to determine the dominant Lewis structure. Okay, and here's our two big rules to uh, for, for applying uh, the formal charges to determine dominant Lewis structure. The first one, uh, first rule is the, the structure that has the most atoms with formal charges closest to zero is the most dominant. Okay, so most, most atoms closest to zero. And then the final one, reason is that uh, if, if you have to have a negative, okay, so if it's tied between two negatives, the one on the more electronegative atom is going to be the dominant structure. All right, so those are your those are your two rules. Okay, so we can um, so here's a good example. So this is thiocyanide. We got SCN minus. All right, we got to determine which structure is most uh, <clears throat> is most dominant. 
Okay, so notice that this guy's right out because of these formal charges. Have there's only one zero, and these other two we have two zeros. So these this one's right out. Okay, um, and then we're, now we're comparing these guys here. Now notice in this case the nitrogen has the negative one, and then this one the sulfur has the negative one, and so the one that's the more electronegative is going to be the one that has the highest formal charge. Well, according to the electronegativity chart in the textbook, nitrogen is higher electronegative, so therefore this is going to be the dominant structure, All right, not this guy. All right. <clears throat> so we'll do a couple practice problems here. So how many valence electrons should appear in the Lewis structure for CH2Cl2 and draw the structure? All right, so first we've got to figure out how many valence electrons we have to work with. So we got a carbon, we got two hydrogens, we got two chlorines, and we're going to add those suckers up. All right, so we got four uh, plus two times one and two times seven. All right, so we say four, uh, oh, 14 plus two is 16 plus four, so we get 20 valence electrons. All right, <clears throat> we got to decide which element's going to go in the middle. Well, carbon has to because it's least electronegative, and hydrogen can never go in the middle, so we'll stick our hydrogens on here, and then we'll go chlorines. All right, and we'll give everything full octet. So hydrogen gets no dots. Uh, chlorines get six dots. Two, three, four, five, six. Carbons get no dots, okay, because it's already got our full octet. Now we count up how many valence electrons we've used. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So 20 valence electrons. And so this has to be our Lewis structure. So how many valence electrons? 20 valence electrons, and this is our structure right there. Pretty easy. Let's do one with multiple bond. All right. All right. Let's just do one of these. So let's do the NO plus ion here. So we got N and O. Okay. We're gonna add those guys up. Nitrogen has five valence. Oxygen has six. So that's eleven valence electrons. All right. And then remember, this plus sign means that it has one fewer electron than it should. So we're gonna subtract one. All right. So that means we have 10 electrons to work with in our Lewis structure. Which one's going to be in the middle? Doesn't matter because there's only two of them. So we'll put nitrogen, oxygen, give everything a full octet. Those of you paying attention know this isn't going to work because of the, uh, the previous problem that we looked at. But anyway, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So we got too many electrons. Uh, so that means we need a triple bond. Okay. All right, and so two, four, six, eight, ten. Notice everything that we've used. Ten electrons. We've used. Uh, we've used ten. Everything has a full octet. Now the one thing we have to pay attention to is when we have that charge, we need to make sure we have to do one additional thing. We put our molecule in brackets and write the charge in the top right. All right. So that's the last thing we have to do for that kind of guy there. All right. <coughs> Let's do this guy here. So the thiocyanate ion has three possible Lewis structures. Or sorry, not thiocyanate. Regular old cyanate ion has three possible Lewis structures. We want to figure out which one is most dominant. So we we got to figure out. So it's essentially just writing out the Lewis structures for this guy. All right. So we're going to add these guys up. So nitrogen has five. Carbon has four. Oxygen has six. So that's fifteen. And then that negative sign means we're going to add one more electron. So we have sixteen. Uh, valence electrons to work with, all right? All right, so which one's gonna go in the middle? Well, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen. Carbon's the least electronegative of the three, all right? So we're gonna say uh, carbon, then we have nitrogen, and then oxygen, we're gonna give everything a full octet. All right, two, 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 two. All right, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, or two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 too many electrons, so that means we're going to have two double bonds or one triple bond. All right, so let's draw the one where we got the double bonds first. All right. Oops, let me go back to my pen. So we got our double bonds. All right. Don't forget, this guy has a charge, so we got to put the bracket with a negative sign. So that's one of them, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right. Now we got to do a couple others, and this is pretty easy. We can just, you know, draw M. So we get a triple bond. We'll do that on the oxygen on this one. We got the minus, and then one more N, and we'll do the triple bond to the oxygen, and then carbon, or triple bond to the nitrogen, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six. And don't forget, we need that lone pair over there. 
All right, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right, so we've used, we've got our three valence, or three resonance structures, all right, for this uh, cyanate ion. Now we have to figure out formal charges. So nitrogen uh, came in with five. In this current iteration right here, remember we cut this in half, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to subtract out six. All right, so that means he has a char uh, formal charge of negative one. Carbon came with four, he has four, so that means he's got a formal charge of zero. Oxygen came in with six, um, and he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, so he's got a formal charge of zero. All right, so the negative one, zero, zero. That's a pretty good contender, right? Um, you know, two zeros and a negative one on a fairly electronegative atom, that's a pretty good contender. Uh, let's see this next guy here. So nitrogen came in with five. In this particular one, he's got seven. Oh my goodness, so he's a minus two. So there's no way this one is going to be the winner. Uh, but we'll go ahead and practice our formal charges here. So we'll do four, and then four, and zero, and then oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I foul something up? That's over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I haven't screwed anything up. Five, seven. And then one, two, three, four. Oh, that's because I can't count. Oxygen. One, two, three, four, five. So oxygen came with six. And then um, one, two, three, four, five. And then he has five valence electrons. So that, or five electrons assigned to him. So that means he's got a charge of plus one. The reason I was questioning myself is because I knew that for a second I thought it wasn't going to add up to minus one. Remember, we have to, the formal charges all have to add up to the total charge on the ion. And if it doesn't do that, you know you fouled something up. So I thought I fouled something up. And then I hadn't really, I just can't count. All right. And then the last one, so this one's definitely not it because it's negative two, zero plus one. Nah, that's no good. All right, we'll try this last one. Nitrogen here. So nitrogen comes with five, and it's got one, two, three, four, five assigned to it. So that means it's zero. Carbon comes in with four, and it has four assigned to it, so it's also zero. And then oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, comes with six. All right, it has seven. All right, so minus one. So <clears throat> then, so you know it has to be the one on the far left or the one on the far right because they've got a negative one and two zeros. So then you just have to decide which one's the more electronegative. Is it oxygen or is it nitrogen? Well, we know from uh, periodic trends that electronegativity increases as you go to the right. Oxygen is to the right on the same period as nitrogen. So therefore, oxygen is more electronegative. So the answer has to be uh, this guy over here on the far right. Okay. Now, one that's in, thing that's interesting is how do you determine what the actual best Lewis structure is? So we just talked about formal charges, but life gets a little bit more exciting. So if we were going to draw, uh, there's this guy, this is ozone, okay? If we were going to draw the Lewis structure for that, we know that we've got three oxygens, so that'd be three times six, so that, oops, kind of drew this close so, and the oxygen looks like a zero. So anyway, so we have 18 valence electrons. So if we were going to write out the Lewis structure for ozone, Okay, and I'll just skip a little bit because we've done a lot of Lewis structures already. All right, so it would look like this, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Now, um, so the way this looks, you know from before when we talked about that double bonds are always shorter than single bonds, right? And triple bonds are even shorter than double bonds. So based on this structure, you would assume that one side, and then it really just depends on which way you flip-flop it, that one side of your a molecule would be uh, have a shorter side than the other. However, when you actually go and you measure these bond lengths, uh, you find that they actually agree with each other, that they're exactly the same, that the bond length from one oxygen to the next is 1.278. And there's no distinction between one side that's short, one side that's long for having a resonance structure. All right, so it kind of throws a kink in our plans. So the, the idea is that when you have an opportunity like that, so here's our ozone again that we just drew, okay? Um, what happens is that these two resonance structures, the electrons kind of exist and flip back and forth infinitely fast between both places. And so you get a, an amalgamation of both of them combined. And it's, they kind of use this example up here um, they kind of explain what's going on, where you take like one that's blue, one that's yellow, you combine and you get a new thing that's green, right? So kind of your color change kind of idea. Um, and so it's the same idea, right? Blue, yellow, green, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and so this gives you your resonance structure. So if you were gonna actually draw uh, this, this bond here, this resonance structure for 
ozone, it would actually look something like this. You'd have your, oops, I got ahead of myself. So it would look like, so you'd have your, your oxygen, okay? One, two, three, four. And then you have your bonds to your oxygen, one pairs and your other oxygen, two, three, four. And then these double bonds would actually be represented as like a dashed uh, double bond. And so that's the that's representing that the, those electrons are in both places at once. All right, so a, a classic example of resonance is benzene, C6H6. Benzene is a cyclical ring with six carbons, hydrogen sticking off of it, with double bonds that alternate, kind of like this. Now, this guy here, see this double-headed arrow right here? This signifies that you're looking at resonance structures, all right? So anytime you're drawing resonance structures, you always need a double-headed arrow. So technically, back here, when you draw the second diagram, these two are resonance, so you need a double-headed arrow to show that resonance, all right? So a lot of times when you draw a, a benzene, because this double bond flips from here to here to here to here to here infinitely fast, back and forth, back and forth, you'll draw, you'll see benzene written as either one of these or like this, okay? All right, and notice that it's got the circle in the middle to represent that those double bonds uh, exist everywhere, all right? Now, there's two terms you need to understand about resonance. There's localized electrons and delocalized electrons. Localized electrons are electrons that are in a specific location, all right? So that's uh, any single bonds, all right? Are always single bonds are always localized, and lone pairs can almost always be localized. However, there are times where it's uh, delocalized. Delocalized electrons are electrons that are shared across multiple atoms, okay? So, um, so these, are, these are essentially your double and triple bonds that it can flip back and forth, all right? So here we go, we're gonna do a couple practice problems. We're not gonna do number one, it gets lame. All right, practice exercise number two it says draw two, oops, equivalent resonance structures for the formate ion HCO2 minus. All right, so we got uh, H, we got carbon, we got two oxygens. All right, so we're gonna add those guys up. So we got hydrogen has one, carbon has four, and then two times six, uh, so 12, 16, 17. And we're going to, so 17 electrons, and we're going to add one because it's negative, so plus one. So we get 18 valence electrons to play with, all right? Which one goes in the middle? Well, carbon has to go in the middle, right? So we're going to do um, hydrogen, we'll do oxygen and oxygen, okay? <clears throat> all right, so we give everything a full octet, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so there's our, everything's got a full octet. And we count them up, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Uh-oh, we've used too many electrons. We need a double bond. All right, so we'll go ahead and erase it from one side, these guys here. So that means we'll add our double bond. Now everything has a full octet, and we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 valence electrons. So we'll put up our bracket negative. So there's our first structure for formate. Now we can draw, you can see that this double bond, I erased it from the those lone pairs from the left hand one, but it could very well have been the right hand one. It just didn't really matter. So we'd have the exact same thing, only it'd be like this. All right? This would be our resonance structure. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right? And so there's our resonance structure for the formate ion. Okay, so resonance structures occur when your your double or triple bond can be moved around, and uh, and the formal charges don't really tell you if one place is uh, more dominant than another. Okay, so there's uh, Lewis structures, resonance, formal charges, lots of new fun things to play with, and um, do your homework, do your practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the flip side.